Brandon Clayton, the algebra guy here, wanted to talk to you today about a very important topic, adding and subtracting fractions with common denominators. So as you see on your screen, these particular expressions have a common denominator. Remember the denominator is in the bottom of the fraction, and for instance, this, this one here all have eights, while the one on the bottom all have 12. How do you handle those? You'll find that it's pretty simple. If, you, if this looks confusing now, it won't be here in a few minutes, so stick along and let's see how to handle those. So two things, what's the rule for adding and subtracting fractions with like denominators? And how can we add and subtract fractions that have common denominators? Notice I interchangeably will say like denominator or common denominators. It's the same thing. It just says that the den denominator is the same. So there's a rule, or there's a practice that you wanna employ when doing that. And what is that practice? Well, let's start with this idea. What is, you see how many quarters here? All right, one quarter plus two more quarters. We know how much is that gonna equal. That's gonna give us three quarters. Well, let's think about this because quarters can be represented as a fraction too because they're one fourth of a dollar, right? There's four of them that make up a whole dollar. And over here we have two fourths because there's two um, quarters um, that make up half a dollar, two out of four. So totally that'll be three-fourths, three-fourths of a dollar. But did you notice what happened with our light denominators? So when we added these light denominators, we ended up with three-fourths. Did you see a pattern? I wonder how we could do every fraction this way, but let's keep moving to see if you can make some connections here. So let's use this model here to think about how we can find the sum. I'm going to do a circle to make this point. So let me get my circle out. Um, I want it to be green. I don't know why, but I'm used to that color. So we're gonna do a circle. And I'm gonna um, divide the circle into, it says eight parts, right? Because we wanted to have eight divisions. Because both of these have a common denominator of eight. So that means all the pieces are the same size. You know, when as a father, I have four beautiful daughters. And sometimes when it's time to split something, if somebody gets a piece that's bigger, then there's no longer equivalent, they're no longer uh, equal parts. So, but these we try to make as equal as we can so we can express this. So let's do three eighths and orange. So we got one eighth right here, two eighths, and three eighths. And I'm gonna choose a different color to do our two eighths. So that gives us one, two. Why do we do it that way? Because it said to add, right? So each one of these represents one eighth. And again, we've talked about this before. Each one represents one eighth. So we wanted three of those eights and we wanted two of those eights. To totally, and you can see what this adds up to, one, two, three, four, five. That's gonna give us five eighths. Again, do you notice a pattern about how we can add fractions that have like denominators or common denominators? So I hope you're starting to see that because I want to draw, make that point very clear here on my next slide. So what do we notice? We notice that anytime you have A over, or some number um, added together, whether the denominators are the same, let's say C. C is going to represent any number. If those two numbers are the same, all you simply do is add your numerators, right? Because that's what we ended up doing here. We just said 3 plus 2 over 8. Now, please get this in your brain. Get this picture right here, right? So these two separate fractions can be represented by this one fraction. And that's important to see because I know we want to skip to the fact that it's five over eight, which it is, but really see that three over three plus two over eight is the same thing too, because it won't always be two numbers up top that I can add together. And I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. So let's practice this. Find the sum here. And again, as always, Think to yourself or solve it before I do. Well, I know that the denominators are the same, so that's going to be a 5. And the top, we're just going to add those two together. Can I add 3 plus 1? Sure it can. 3 plus 1 is just 4 or 5. And I'm done with that problem. Simple as that. What about this one? Well, I have the same denominator when we're adding these two. So I'm just taking 3 and I'm saying x plus my other numerator, which is two. Can I add X and two? No, I can't because these are not like terms. 
I have so many X's and so many twos. You can't put those together and say what many students make the mistake of is two X. Well, that says two times X. We want two plus X. So those are two different things or X plus two. So those are two different things and we don't want to try to force those to come together because those are unlike terms. 3x plus 2x is 5x because those are all x's. Um, so let's keep our discussion about like terms in mind while we're doing this. Uh, what about this one? All right, so the one thing that's different about this one is we have a negative sign. But let's go ahead and realize that we do have a, a denominator that's the same, which is d. This negative sign, we're just going to put to this negative, um, put to this 9. So you can, it, it, remember we talked about negative, let's say 9 over d is equal to negative 9 over d like this. And it's also equal, in case you ever see it, to this. All three of these are equal to each other. Now we want to keep it on top this time because we want like denominators. We don't want to drop the negative to the d like we could do and still be the same value, but we want to keep the d the same, so we're going to bring it up here to the 9. After doing that, we're going to add our 3, and then ask ourselves, can we add this to simplify it anymore? We sure can. That'll give us the negative 6 over d, and there's nothing else we can do to that. All right, let's find the sum of this one. I noticed that my denominators, again, are the same, 11. And I'm going to add 2n plus my 5n. There we go. Now, is there anything I can do to combine my numerators? Absolutely I can. Why? Because my terms are the same. I have n's and n's that can combine to give me a 7n. So that makes sense, right? You got three apples plus five apples is eight apples. Or in this case, two, uh, let's think of something uh, n. Two nails plus five nails is seven nails. But you can say two apples plus five nails is seven. You see what's going to happen? There's going to be that moment of seven what? Well, because they're different terms, you can't just put those together. So we literally have to keep them separate if they're different. But we can combine them if the terms are the same. So 7 in over 11, we can't uh, simplify 7 over 11. Um, there's no factors to take out of those two numbers, so we leave it just like that. All right, what about this one? So I can see that we're adding with a common denominator already of 12. So I'm going to go ahead and write my 12 here. This negative is going to get attached to this 3. And I'm going to add a negative 5. So this is just uh, adding integers here because my 12 is going to stay the same. What's negative 3 plus a negative 5? Well, that give me a negative 8. I can see that these are both even, so I know they can reduce even further. Further down to um, the easiest way to do is just take out as much of the factor as you can. Now, I know I'm going to keep this negative. Take out a 4 and a 2. But I can also take down here a 4 and a 3. Well, taking these 4's out makes it clear that I'm going to have a negative 2 over 3. All right, so let's use fraction circles to find this difference. So how would I look at difference? So now we're talking about s subtracting. How would you subtract? To f it's going to be very similar to what we did when we added. So I'm going to make a circle. And I want to model what's going on in this fraction here. Uh, let's get a different color right there. So we got four fifths. So we divided everything into fives, first of all. So let's get our little five's going so that's a little bit tougher for me but I'm going to try it um, no, it's not going to be perfect oh that's so ugly all right I'm definitely going to try this again okay um, bam right there right there and right here there you go there is fifths so fifths are kind of tough but we got four fifths, so we're going to shade in one fifth, two of the five, three of the five, and four of the five. So there you go. So what if I want to subtract one fifth? Well, each one of these represents one fifth, 
and we want to subtract one fifth. So that just simply means I'm going to take one away. So to demonstrate that, what would I do? Well, I can just erase one of these. And I don't know why I'm making that noise, but that's just the noise you make when you erase. All right, so now we have how many fists? One, two, three. Three fists. Three fists left, which makes sense, right? Look, four fists minus one fifth. Just as, the, as in addition, we're going to keep our denominator the same and subtract our numerators, leaving us three over five. So nothing really new here, but I want to make sure you see some subtraction problems so you'll feel comfortable with it. So as you can see, the rule is still the same. Like denominators, if you subtract, if you're subtracting like denominators, it doesn't matter what these numbers are or variables are, you're going to subtract those from each other. If they can combine as one, we're going to combine them. If not, we're just going to leave them separate. All right, let's do this one together. Um, subtracting fractions leaves us, the, the, they both have the same on the bottom, so we're going to leave it that way. And we end up with 23 minus 14. Can we combine 23 and 14? You better believe it. To 9 over 24. Does 9 and 24 have any common factors we can bring, we can take out? They sure do, because I know that both have a 3. So I'm going to try taking a 3 out of each. And I can see that this 3 and this 3 goes away, leaving me with 3 over 8. Now I just check again, do 3 and 8 have any common factors I can take out other than 1? And the answer is no. So there is my answer. And here we go with this one. What do we do here? Again, I encourage you to pause it, work these out yourself first, and see what you get. All right, now I know my denominator is common. It's, it's a like denominator, so I'm going to um, keep that the same. I um, might subtract my y. This negative is going to get attached to this 1. So it's the same thing as y minus 1. Can I combine y and a 1? Well, absolutely not. Why? Because there are two different terms. We're dealing with a variable um, with one exponent, and we're dealing with a variable with zero exponent. You know, so if you had a y to the zero, anything to the zero power is one. So this is still be, just be one. That's another conversation. But you can see clearly that these two don't do not have the same variable. So we're going to leave it just like that. All right. What about this one? Please try this one. Uh, like denominators, we're going to keep that the same. Wonderful. And this negative is going to go with this 10. And this negative with this 4. And there you go. Can I, can I simplify this top part? You better believe it. That gives me now negative 10 minus 4, which is negative 14 over x. I cannot combine 14 and x because they're all unlike terms, so I'm going to leave it just like that. Again, you could see this written negative 14 over x like this. Um, and this is also equal to, but you may not see it often written on the bottom um, term. But just know that those are all equal. Alright, what about this guy? So we're adding and then we're subtracting. So a lot going on here. But one thing I do know is when I'm adding and subtracting and have like denominators, I can keep that the same. And let, we just start adding and subtracting the numerator. So I got 3 plus a negative 5 right from right there and then minus a 1 so let's just go through and simplify this sum 3 plus a negative 5 well that's 3 minus 5 which is giving me a negative 2 and then I have to subtract 1 from that when I subtract 1 negative 2 take away another one which is a negative 3 and there's my answer negative 3 eighths and that does it for us so What's the rule for adding and subtracting fractions? How can we add and subtract fractions that have a common denominator? So did we answer that question? Absolutely. We talked about the rule. And this, and the answer to this question really answers the second, right? What's the rule for adding and subtracting? Well, if you have the same, um, whether you're adding or subtracting, I'm going to put plus or minus, what, A and B, all you're going to do is keep your denominator and add or subtract your numerator. And so that's all we were doing. And that really sums up how to handle either one of those. All right, so that does it for us today. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Brandon Clayton, the Algebra Guy, and I will see you next lesson.